if he's honest, he'll say energy. But now we got this Lawrence Krauss dude who uh, writes about uh, nothing created everything. And then when you read his book, he doesn't have nothing creating everything. He always starts with something. Because it's intellectually dishonest to say something didn't exist forever, but you don't understand it, do you? You don't. You don't. You don't understand anything in space. You don't know. And so you don't understand how God can actually be present in the sacrament. You can't understand a ton of things about God. Isn't it interesting that God is so big and infinite in his wisdom that he's so big, you're only right here. He's got his, his, all his knowledge right here. And he's trying to communicate with your puny little mind that's filled with sin on top of that. Here's, here's you, and here's the word of God. And it, you're just what? Your, your, your knowledge of God is like that. He knows it. So that every one of the truths that, that you have in regards to God is you're just beginning to understand. You just, you just have a little tidbit of, of a giant iceberg of God's wisdom and knowledge. That's who you and I are. Okay? So with that being said, at what point do I reach accountability because I can finally understand what's going on. Never. Huh? Never. Not in my life. I'm six, almost 60 years old. And I know more than I did when I was your age. All right? So let's, let's say, uh, you want, let, let's you and I debate baptism. <laughs> <laughs> you want to? You tell, you tell them <laughs> what baptism is. And then I'll go next. You want to do that? Um, yeah. Sure. You do? Okay. Really? Sure. I'm expecting you to say no. Um. I should think for a second. Okay. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I really, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just here. Here's what I want to do. Okay. Who's going to win this? Who's going to give more information, you or me? If you describe baptism, and I describe baptism, who's going to give more information, you or me? You. Right. Why? Because you know more about it. Because why? Because you're older. Right. 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 Okay. So my knowledge of baptism, your knowledge of baptism. It's very interesting that you said you'll give me, you would, and you would. I, I know that because you, you you think about these things, and you would. All right, you if you were to give us your up knowledge of baptism, and then I was going to teach the rest of the class on baptism, which I'm going to do. <coughs> I will have better understanding and knowledge about baptism than you. Okay. Now here's the question: Which one of us has more faith? Huh? Well, can we can we determine then? Therefore, I have more faith than you do. No. 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 What, let's take a five-year-old. Let's put a five-year-old on here. Okay. Bring a five-year-old. Take your off. Look, five-year-old tells us about Jesus. And what's that five-year-old going to say? Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, he might sing, "Jesus loves me, this I know." Right. And I might quote Luther's large catechism to you, right? Who has more faith, me or the five-year-old? I don't think you can tell. But I definitely, I definitely would not suggest that I have more faith than the five-year-old. And this is the point. Do I? I don't know. I remember when I was five. I definitely had more faith when I was five than when I was 19. But... Well, maybe not more or less, maybe it's just different. Maybe different, but the point being, it's what is faith is what I'm trying to define. What is faith? What is faith? And, and give me a synonym for faith. Trust. 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 That's what it is. You trust, right? Have you ever been as a kid with your parents and your parents, you guys were in a situation, and you knew you couldn't handle the situation, what your parents did. 
because they've been around the block more than you and they handled the situation. All you did was what? <coughs> Depended on your parents. You trusted your parents to get it through. Maybe something broke and your father fixed it, right? Or what have you. Have you ever noticed that? We're all in that kind of a situation. Now watch this. Watch what Jesus actually says. And I'm going to take uh, Luke. I'm going to go into the Bible here and just read this part of Luke. Now they were bringing infants that Jesus would touch them or bless them. When the disciples saw it, they rebuked Jesus. No, they rebuked the parents. But Jesus called him saying, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter into it. Okay? If you go before this, you'll find that Jesus is teaching adults like us, and all people who can, can reason for themselves by parables. So it's very important that you and I learn the Word of God. That's not what we're saying. Because you learn the Word of God, and I, Jesus, I would suggest Jesus is saying that you can come back to your childlike trust, not to become necessarily a scholar, right? So he's teaching adults by way of parables. And then the disciples... Stop parents who are bringing, and the Greek word there, there's several words you could use for children in the Greek. This one is the word used for infants up to all the way up to toddler, so infant to two years old. All right? So parents faithfully were bringing their children to Jesus in order for him to bless them. The disciples stopped the parents and rebuked them and basically is telling those parents that this is a waste of time. Jesus gets angry with the disciples because in, in, in Mark it says he was indignant, he was angry. And he said, let the little children come to me, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, that unless you have the faith of a child, you will not enter into the, the kingdom of God. There's another part in scripture where he takes a little child when he decide, discerns faith and he does the same thing. And, 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 and he brings the person down to the trust of a child. Okay? Now, can a baby, can an infant, therefore, have trust? So, in other words, the, the faithless people were who? The, people, the disciples. The faithful people were the what? Parents bringing their children. And Jesus affirms that what you see in the child that the disciples are rejecting is the true faith, right? Today, we have Abraham trusted God, and he had no idea where he was going. We have that in our Old Testament lesson today. He has no idea where he just trusted, so it's a blind trust. That's what faith is, okay? So, head knowledge about the Bible, whether it's at a level, whatever level it is, 
is good for you in order to what? Bring you back to childlike faith. That's why you don't graduate. When you guys get confirmed, you're not going to graduate like you do from high school. And get, you're just affirming the faith that we were, you were baptized into. Faith, therefore, is just the trust that God gives you in him. Okay? Now, can a baby have trust? Can an infant have trust? Given that definition, you better believe it. Does a baby have trust in his mother in the womb, even though he or she can't figure out what's going on? Better believe it. They've done studies on twins in the womb, and they verified this. They verified the relationship that happens between the two children in the womb. And there's faith going on. Any of you, all of us who have had children, you know there's faith. When you raise a child, that child, uh, it's very interesting that if, 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 if mom and dad doesn't take care of the child, the child what? Will very quickly die. They can do nothing. They have to completely depend on somebody else in order to live. And I think God gives us to us. Isn't it interesting that the, in, the infant human born in the image of God does less than the chimp? Because if you look at the baby chimp, he can already hang out his mother's back while they're swinging around in the trees. An infant human can't do that. There's all kinds of animals where the child, that, the, 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 that which is born of the animal, has more ability than an infant human. You think God is telling us something here? Yes. Does a child have faith? Yes. Can he say mommy yet? No. He understands right away that if he cries, he's going to get a breast full of milk, and then it'll, 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 it'll solve that what? Hunger problem that he can't define, but it changes that, right? He's going to get his diaper changed. He's going to get human contact. And, and right away, the, 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 the baby already have human contact in the womb? Yes. That's why there's this, this great relationship that exists with the mom and, and the baby because of the matriarchal understanding. They understand the feminine. The baby, the first thing every one of us relate to when we're conceived in the womb is our mother. And there's something really important about that that we're missing in society today. We're missing that terribly in society today. Mom is the center of it all. And there's this relationship. That relationship continues outside of the womb, right? Think about that. Is there faith involved in that? Yes. Can the child describe it? Later on he can, but not then. Does that, does that take away the faith of the child? No, it doesn't. So at an age of accountability, age of, what, what point is it where you now become able to be smart enough and intellectual enough in order to be baptized? Well, you've now changed the point of baptism from faith to knowledge and works. What about a mentally handicapped person who will never understand it like a five-year-old? All right? Do they have faith? You better believe they have faith. In fact, Jesus says that's where you find the faith, in that simple trust. How much do you understand? How much do any of us understand the wholeness of God and his wisdom? Just a little bit. But with the little bit that we have, we what? Move along in life in a world in which a lot of times you're going to say, why isn't God what? Intervening the way I would intervene if I were God. Are we making sense here? So if the baby has faith, now you're ready for the age of accountability? It is in the scriptures. Anybody know what it is? It's going to go against your human reasoning, but what does the scripture say when you're accountable before God? You got it. It's in your conception. And sin doth my mother conceive me. That's why babies do die in the womb because of sin. And you and I can say what? What's our first? What's the first thing that you say when a baby dies in the womb? What's your What's your first thought about God? I would say is he unfair? Why didn't he allow that baby to be born like I was born? Do you have questions like that? Yeah. Is the answer bigger than you? Yep. You can start to understand it. You can just begin to understand it, but you don't have the answers. So if it's the age of accountability, it's at your conception because you have the sin problem, and that's what your catechism will say. 
I'm conceived in sin. So I need God's salvation right off the bat. Right? What is faith? Is it all about a knowledge? No, it's trust. When do you start having trust? When you're conceived. So you have a sin problem and you have the trust, right? So can a child in the womb have faith in God? Yeah, do I understand it? No, right? So did the, I don't know how many of you may have had miscarriages or lost a child in your womb. Uh, it's, a, it's a traumatic thing. Uh, but could the word of God have reached my children that were in the womb and never baptized? Yeah. So what do I do? I leave it to God. Who else do I want to leave it to? I don't want to leave it to anybody else but God, right? Because God loves us. God has all the answers, even though I don't understand the big picture, right? Isn't that interesting that faith actually makes you more vulnerable than reaching a certain age of accountability to where I say, okay, now I'm ready to be baptized. Now? Why? Because now I understand. No, you don't. So where is that age of accountability? I remember having talking with Carl about it show around 10 when we raised children. I said, that age of accountability is a lot younger if it's because I don't know. Remember your kid that time? Did they believe? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So why in the world wouldn't you baptize your child? If, and we're going to go into what, bat, what baptism is. What does baptism give you? The whole ball of wax. We'll get into that next week. It gives you the whole thing. And that's what the scriptures say. It gives you the entire thing. All of salvation in a sacrament to which now I could say, even though I've had a really rotten day, and maybe God doesn't love me like I, like I think he does, because you know what I said and did wasn't all that really nice. And I can go back to my baptism and remember what God has done to me and go back to the gospel therein. And it was real water that was poured on me with the word of promise that God makes and God keeps his promise in spite of me, see? And that's why we always return to that incident called our baptism and why God would give us something that concrete, okay? So I'm conceived in sin, I need baptism. Faith is a trust. Babies have faith, yet even in the womb. Um, so why wouldn't you give it to him? Not only that, you also have the whole historical context. When was the child uh, circumcised in the Old Testament? On the what day? Eighth day. The male was circumcised. Women were not circumcised. But the male circumcision also identified with the female circumcision as Adam, or Abraham's name, was changed from Ab Abram to Abraham, and Sarah's was Sarah. It was a covenant that God made, and God made it to an infant. And what does baptism do? Baptism replaces circumcision. That was the Old Testament covenant. Baptism is the New Testament covenant. And we know that they, they were baptizing children as, as infants right from the beginning. Okay? So here we go. I don't want to, you know, if, 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 if it's all about, now watch this, watch this. So what happens then, therefore? In baptism, by God's word, God gives you a promise. It's all God's action on you. That's the gospel, because you have nothing to do with salvation. If I'm going to reject my infant baptism, and then join a church that says, now you have to reject that infant baptism. Now you're going to commit your life to Jesus. All right, now you're ready for baptism. Where's, what's that baptism now connected to? My commitment to Jesus. How committed to Jesus are you? Are you? Are you really committed? Are you 100%? So, like, 24 hours from now, between this discussion and 24 hours from now, after everything, and I'm, I'm talking to everybody, everything you think, say, and do, how well would that have reflected your commitment to Jesus? See what happens? Yeah. Yeah. You know what, you know what C.S. Lewis says, guys? C.S. Lewis said, if you really want to know your sinful condition, try to be good. Go ahead. Do it. I, I, I practiced this today. And in church, <clears throat> I wasn't good with some of the thoughts I had. In regards to 
the seminarian who was way too slow with communion. And he didn't have enough cups. He had to go back and get some more cups. And his rookie mistake was causing me to stand up there like an idiot waiting for him. And here I am in church getting mad at the poor guy. Why would I mad at him? He didn't mean it, right? You do the same thing. Lewis says, if you want to know how bad you are, try being good. So if it's about my commitment to Jesus, if my baptism attached to my commitment to Jesus... Who's do, whose work am I relying on now? Mine. What is baptism? In baptism, I'm connected to Christ's death and resurrection. I'm washed clean. I'm reborn. All this stuff is in Scripture, and I can show it to you. It's in, it's, it's in today's Gospel lesson. Born of water and the Spirit. Jesus says it. All right? So the only reason people reject infant baptism, I would suggest, is they're not understanding the purity of faith. And I'm not saying that people in other denominations aren't going to heaven and stuff like that, but I think this is a serious mistake. To not, and, and they kind of know it, well, they don't know it's a mistake, but what do they do instead of baptize? They um, commit their child, or they do a, what do they call it? A dedication. Yeah. Right. I think they, they understand those things too. And I'm not trying to be mean, but either either we ought to baptize infants or we shouldn't, right? Any questions? Yes. That was Easter Sunday. That was Easter Sunday. I remember that day. Yeah. I remember that. Any other questions or thoughts? Okay. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for um, your word and your promise, and thank you for the baptism that we've received. Uh, I pray that we would continue to go back to the fountain and realize that because you did baptize us, nobody can take that historical reality away. And may it be a real comfort for us in our lives so that we can return to the grace and mercy that you bestow on us every single day through that blessed sacrament. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, see you next week.